Welcome back, boys and girls. We're now going to take a look at Grade 4, Chapter 11. And Grade 4, Chapter 11 is all about angles. We learned an awful lot in Chapter 10 about angles, and we're going to continue learning more and more about angles. And the first question that I'm going to ask you is, how can you relate angles and fractional parts of a circle? Wow, we're going to do a little investigation. Let's get started. So in Lesson 11.1, our essential question is, how can you relate angles and fractional parts of a circle? So I'm going to go back and take a look. Well, I understand angles, and I certainly understand the concept of fraction, but I'm talking about fractional parts, and I'm looking at the word circle. This might be a little confusing. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to start off by using something that is very familiar to you. Let's get started with our investigation. That's right, you're looking at a clock. And the clock is going to be the perfect tool for us to get started. First of all, it's a circle. So as I look at my circle and I look at the outer edge, I notice that I have numbers that run from 12 all the way around the clock face in a clockwise rotation. Clockwise is one of our vocabulary words in this unit, and clockwise will take me from the number 12 position around to the right, down, and all the way back up on the left, back to the 12. So that's clockwise. So I want to think a little bit about what the word clockwise means. But let's go back to the clock face for a minute. As I go around the clock face, I'm noticing that there are 12 numbers. These numbers are, are going to be important for us because I'm thinking the concept of fractional parts. How many parts are in a whole? If I have 12 numbers, then what I'm going to look at, boys and girls, are the spaces between each of these numbers. So from 12 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, this is equal spacing. Well, okay, that spacing, that equal spacing all around the clock tells me that I have 12 equal parts. That's important because my denominator is going to be 12. How many pieces or how many equal spaces do I have all the way around the clock face? You're right. I have 12 equal pieces or equal spaces between the numbers all the way around the clock face. 12 over 12. And I want to think my unit fraction. My unit fraction is, of course, 1 12. And so we're going to concentrate on that concept of the idea of a fractional part of our clock being 1 12th. Let me change colors here. Now, I get the concept of the fraction. What I'm interested in is where do the angles come in? So let me stop and think about it. How can I have angles in a circle? Let's look again at our clock. Okay, first of all, I know an angle is two rays that come together at the same vertex point, and when they share that vertex point, the two rays connect, and they form an angle. So I need to find a vertex point on my clock. Oh, you're right. Here it is. The very center of my clock is going to be the vertex point. Now, I'm going to look at the minute hand and the hour hand to help me form those angles. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to draw a line from the vertex point up to the, whoop, all the way up to the 12. That's going to be my first ray. I'm going to take my second ray and I'm going to draw it right up through the number one. Okay? Now, oh, look at this. I want to ask a couple of quick questions here. First of all, I've got my, my circle. I'm using the center point of the circle as my vertex point. Look at the rays. What do the rays form? You write the sides of the angle. So let me ask you, if I can form an, a, a, an angle from the vertex point or the center point of my circle, and I can draw a ray up through the 12 and then through the 1, what is the measurement? as a fraction of that angle. Well, if you said the measurement of that angle is 1 12th of the circle, you would be right. 
Think a little bit about this. Angles, fractional parts. We're going to try and relate the two. Let me stop you again. Let's see what happens when I, when I draw the, the next ray. I've got one ray going from the center point of my circle, and I'm going to draw my second one through the number two. Now, taking a look at this, what do you think the measure of this angle as a fractional part will be? Well, I've gone through one equal part, two equal parts out of 12. So the fractional part would be two twelfths. Good job. Let's try one more. This time, I'm going to keep that one ray from the center point of my circle up to the number 12, and I'm going to draw my next ray from the center point, which is my end point, through the 3. Now let me ask you, what is the fractional part of the circle that I have just used to create this angle? Well, let's see, let's see. I've gone through 1, 2, 3 equal parts, so this must mean that I've gone through 3 twelfths of my circle. 3 twelfths of my circle, oh, I know I can simplify that to 1 fourth. So as I'm moving around my circle in a clockwise motion, I have just created an angle, and I've related the angle to the fractional part of my circle, which is 3 twelfths, or one-fourth of my circle. I think I'm getting the hang of this. How about you? Let's, let's try it again. Let's take a look at this. If I were to start moving around my circle, I'm sorry about that. If I were to start moving around my circle in a counterclockwise movement, now this counterclockwise movement allows me to move from the 12 from the 12 to the 11 to the 10 I'm going in the opposite direction I call that counterclockwise so here I am moving around my circle in a counterclockwise movement my numbers are descending in order around the clock face I'm moving from the 12 towards the left counterclockwise as I'm doing this I want you to take a look at the yellow rays that I'm creating How many of these rays will I create if I do a full turn counterclockwise around my circle? Well, I have one, two, one, two, three. If I continue, I will have created 12 rays. Hmm, 12 rays, 12 spaces, 12 angles. And all of my angles are originating right here at the center of my clock face. Now I'm starting to see that I'm creating angles in a circle using the center point of my circle as the vertex point of my angle. And I'm using the numbers to help me draw the edges or the rays. And I know that if I draw these all the way around my circle, I'm going to have 12 equal angles. Oh, good job. Each one of these angles will be 1 12th of my circle. All right. What happens now if I draw my ray from the center point down through the number 6? There we go. Right there. How much of my circle, how much of my clock face, moving in a clockwise motion around the face of the clock, using a fraction, how much, what, what has been the movement around the clock face? You're right, six, whoops, sorry about that, six twelfths, six twelfths or one half. Oh, this is getting good. Let's try one more. Hmm. 
this time, boys and girls, I'm going to ask you to travel around the clock face in a counterclockwise motion from the position of 12 to the position of 3. When I draw my straight line through the 3, how much of my circle in a, in, as a fraction have I traveled? You're right. 9 twelfths, which equals 3 fourths. So as you can see, boys and girls, I can relate fractions or fractional parts of a circle to the angles that I'm creating. Now I'm going to give you some practice problems to work on tonight, and let's see how well you can do. Here are some practice problems for you to work on. You're going to tell what fraction of the circle is shaded, that the shaded angle represents. And these are your practice problems for this evening. So let's go ahead and mark these as practice problems. One, two, well, one, two, four, and five. Now, I'm going to give you just a few more, so hold on. I'm going to give you two more. In these practice problems, I want you to tell me whether the angle of the circle shown is a one-fourth, one-half, three-fourths, or one full turn clockwise or counterclockwise around the circle. Please notice your red arrow. All right, boys and girls, hopefully what we've been able to do is to allow you to say that I can relate angles and fractional parts of a circle. Taking a look at how I'm creating my angles using the center point of the circle as the vertex of my angles. All right, let's try this. Good night. See you tomorrow.